Happy Mother's Day! Today is the celebration of motherhood. The beautiful blessing of sleepless nights, stretch marks, and being a slave to a smaller master for a minimum of 18 years of your life. Yay. <laughs> I could have said a lot more, but I'm trying to be positive. Today we celebrate all mothers by allowing the children to cook your breakfast. This only ends well for those parents whose kids qualify for junior mastership. So stick to toast or cereal as your order. Note to entrepreneurs, a breakfast in bed delivery service would be a real hit on this day each year. You could probably earn enough on this day every year to see you through for the rest of the year. Think about it, it's out there. So, Mother's Day should be a reminder to men everywhere that without mothers, the human race would die, stop to exist, and that we are rather important in the grand scheme of things. Stop being assholes and start treating women like the goddesses they are instead of second-rate citizens. I may be referring to particular countries around the world. Mm, I'm sure you know which ones I'm talking about. Now today isn't just about women who have given birth. It's for women with fur kids. Women who have opened their home and heart to another's child and love them as if they are their own. And of course, it's for mothers whose children are not held in their arms, but in their hearts. Mothers come in all shapes and sizes and from every corner of the earth. So to all the mothers out there, no matter if your country celebrates today or not at all, I wish every single one of you happy Mother's Day. Now, let's get on with today's topic. So, today's topic is about writing and motherhood. And my special guest for today is Pixie, Pixie. <laughs> the blessing of my heart. Welcome uh, to your first quickie. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello to all of you. So, my journey as a mother and a writer started around the same time. I became a mother in 2009 to this beautiful young lady right here. And while home on maternity leave and suffering from insomnia, I started writing. I have very happy memories of lying on the floor to edit my very first manuscript and Pixie having tummy tight beside me and her learning to crawl by climbing all over me. One of her favourite things to do was while I was laying there editing was crawl from my ankles all the way up my body to my head and then peek over my shoulder and give me this great big smile and then of course I have to stop editing and have a bit of playtime with it because it was just so cute you couldn't say no to it <laughs> uh, so because Pixie grew up with me always having books in hand whether I was reading them writing them or editing them she actually grew up with a really great respect for books never once has she tried to use a book as a chew toy even as a baby She's never ripped the pages, at least not on purpose. <laughs> and I'm proud to say that Pixie is just as big a book nerd as her mother is. Yay. You're not proud of being a book nerd? <laughs> I am. Yeah? Yeah. So what are your favourite books to read? Harry Potter, um, Witch Wars, Bad Mermaids, and a load of other books. A load of other books. <laughs> Not to read. Uh, so I think you're just reading one by Neil Patrick Harris. What book was that? Um, the Magic Misfits. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay. As every mother knows, motherhood is a full-time job most of the time. I just separated from my ex-husband when I had Pixie. So not only was I a new mum, I was a single mother raising a child with no assistance financially or emotionally from the father. Uh, when I went back to work, finding time for writing became important to me. You see, it was in my blood all along and even though I didn't realise it at the time, writing that first email to my friends, they're encouraging me to keep going propping me up and egging me on effectively, opened the door to a flood of stories and emotions, and once the door was open, there was no shutting out again. 
So between work and motherhood and a new relationship, I needed to find time for my passion. This is where the benefit of my need for routine, insomnia, and only getting a maximum of six hours sleep a night comes into play. Uh, my routine has changed in the length of time over the years. But this is the basic breakdown of how it works. I get up, I get Pixie ready, we take her to school or daycare or wherever she was going for the day. I would go to work all day. Then I pick her up. I would parent until Pixie goes to bed, some days a bit later than I would like. And then I would write until I pass out from the need to sleep. And then we started all over again the next day, except on weekends, where I would write around whatever weekend activities we had. So basically, I fit writing in where I can. And if you have a look at my sleep charts, I have a Fitbit, so it tracks my sleep charts. Um, you can actually see that I average about four hours sleep at night. It's not yeah. much. It's not my fault. No, I know. You get like 10 hours sleep. So Unless you cut one of the tweaks and you go for a cock in the morning. So as you can guess, this is just the writing side of being an author. Once you start to take the plunge and submit your hard work to public ridicule, I mean publishing, a whole new level of project management comes into play. There's plotting, editing, publishing, preparation, which includes professional editing, cover art, navigating and publishing applications to create a well-presented novel. Of course, if you have the money, you can pay someone else to do all this for you. I have a mortgage and a child and six cats, so my financial means are severely restricted. The actual publishing, marketing of your book, and the building of armour for when the reviews start to come in. And if you're a panster like myself, you have multiple projects at various stages in the process at any one time. So how do I manage all this? Well, like most things today, I have an app. Now there are various apps out there to help you manage your time. But I came across Trello nearly seven years ago now, and it became my storyboard to start with. And when I started publishing on multiple platforms and doing things like newsletter and weekly blogging videos, I added a new board to help me manage what I call the business side of being an author. I'm going to do a quickie all about Trello next week, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. I'll talk about it more in depth and about how I use it then. The other necessary tool of a writing mother is a sacred writing space. I have my office writing space and I've already posted a video of that one on YouTube already. I'll put the link below. Um, but I actually share that with my husband when he's working from home or when he's home. And so I always, I'm not always comfortable here, plus in winter it can get quite cold in my office. So the one that I actually spend the most time in is my library. Unfortunately, I also have to share that with the cats who have decided it's their bedroom as well. Right on X! Wait, 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 wait. Oh no, he's gone, never mind. So, welcome to my writing space. This is the space where I spend most of my time writing. <laughs> and... The pixie is being me right now with my laptop so that you can see exactly what it looks like when I'm writing. So this is my library. All my collectibles up there. That's the husband bookshelf. And then these two are all my bookshelf over here. And as you can see, right next to my favorites authors Oh look, there's the best author. Yay! So, this is where I sit to write. And this is where the cats hang out when they're in here. I do have one sleeping down here right now. Nice We're trying not girl. to disturb her. Hey, Manny girl. And so I sit in my chair and I have this beautiful quote that I look at. 
Never give up, never lose hope, always have faith, it allows you to cope. Trying times will pass, as they always do. Just have patience, your dreams will come true. So put on a smile, you'll live through your pain, know it will pass, and strength you will gain. So, yeah, that's my sacred writing space. Don't wear out the keyboard. So that's me as a writing mother in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Next week's topic is going to be on Trello and how I use it to project manage my writing. Uh, this one was a special request from Layla who wants to know how I use Trello so that she can also possibly start using Trello for keeping track of her writing. Okay, so now we're on to this week's questions. Since this week's questions all relate to the pixie, I'm actually going to let her answer them for you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first question. Does your daughter ask about what you write? Yes, all the time. When it, like, I come into the room... And she's sitting there on her laptop or iPad and I come over and lean over her shoulder, lean against her, look at Millie or the cat, whoever cat's in there, look at her and go, what is that about? What book are you writing? What book are you editing? Which book is it? So what book am I editing right now? Of Shadow and Light? Yep. Second question. What age will you let your daughter read your books? 18. And why is that? Because swear words, inappropriate comments. Inappropriate content. Just not appropriate for children. She knows that. She knows she's not allowed to read them yet. And when she's 18, she'll be allowed to read them. Just another seven years. Yep. Um, question three. Is the pixie proud of you? Does she like to write as well? I love to write. And yes, I am very proud of my mum. What sort of stories do you like to write? Fantasy. Yeah. Um, fantasy and adventure, that's pretty much it. They're good, they're good genres to, you know, be in there for kids, I think. Okay, and question four. Will you ever write a children's book for Pixie to read? We've actually discussed this because Pixie has asked me if I would write a book with her. And I've said that the reason I would probably never write a children's book is because of the fact that I don't think I can write. <laughs> Just make a book without all the inappropriate The naughty content. stuff in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think instead I would be more likely to write a young adult novel, um, but an older young adult probably, more like a new adult. I think by the time I finished a book like that right now for her, she would be in her teens anyway, probably late teens, and then it'll be okay for her to read it. So Shard, which is one of the books I had up on Wattpad for quite a while, uh, was my attempt at writing a young adult novel, but more around the age of 16-year-olds. It's very much a coming-of-age book, um, talking about the things that kids deal with as teenagers, and the actual um, protagonist of that book was... A girl who is Asperger's um, and a lot of that comes from my own experiences of being a teenager on the spectrum so that might be a book that when Pixie is a teenager she might want to read but right now again it is not the appropriate content for how old do I have to be I would say you'd need to be 14 15 to start reading that one because it does deal with a lot of teenage topics like drugs and intimacy and you know there is swearing in it all that sort of stuff but that's stuff that teenagers do and teenagers know about so I'm okay with you reading that considering the books I was reading when I was 14 I actually don't think that would be anywhere near as bad as Cashiel's Dark. as what just putting it out there as some of the books that I was reading when I was 14 okay so 
that's all I have for now. Uh, thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about today's topic, last week's topic, next week's topic, then send them in by Wednesday midnight. That's the close off for questions to see them answered next Sunday. Thank you for joining me. No problem. And thank you for Mother's Day. And thank you for being my beautiful goosey. Now you need a turtle hug now. Come here. Now where's Onyx? Bye. <laughs> Bye.